look, I I understand where she's coming from. I think it it it's the delivery of how she said it. Hello, my loves. My name's Zach, and welcome back to a brand new season of Pop Off. Oh, how I've missed these fluorescent borders. The chat show where we talk to the eliminated queens of RuPaul's Drag Race UK season six. And joining me in the studio today, be careful, she's gonna suck the life out of you. It's Saki You! <laughs> I like that little intro, that's nice. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. I've got to be honest with you. I think I speak for all of us watching last night when I say, you gagged us for real. Gag. I'm like, yeah, I, I guess I'm the gag of the season. <laughs> Honestly, you're the goop of the season. It's, it's, it's yeah. live on forever. Well, you know, leaving my mark, even if it's in the shower, leaving it I'm there. In, in the shower. <laughs> no, no better place to be. It honestly pains me to see you have to leave this early because of something out of your control, like something so mundane. How are you feeling now about it? Um, I'm fine. Like I've had, obviously it was filmed quite a while ago. So I've had all this time to kind of really one, look after my knee firstly, um, and also kind of process it and really mentally just cope with it. So like, I'm fine, I'm good. Like. Good. It's all good. <laughs> it's it's madness because obviously you auditioned for the season, filmed the show, have to wait a whole year, and then do the entire press tour knowing that you were going to have to leave in that exit. I feel sorry for you because surely it must have just been more annoying than anything. Yeah, because it's kind of like something you have to keep secret. It's like it's a secret yeah. from everyone, you know. But um, now that it's out, it's kind of like lifted from my shoulders. I can like finally talk about it and yeah it's it's fine though it's great <laughs> is it like a relief as well just to be like oh thank god yeah it is it's like like i said it's just like a weight lifted off my shoulders and i can just again like openly talk about it and if anyone's got questions then yeah <laughs> i'm more than happy to answer them <laughs> i mean my first question i have to ask obviously how's the leg now it's good um obviously i am um, doing my week, like daily workouts to keep it yeah. strong because I need to keep it strong. Otherwise, you know, I don't need it buckling under me or, you yes. know, a repeat in the shower. Yeah. So yeah, like it, it's just like a constant thing now. I have to kind of keep on top of it. I mean, how's the post shower PTSD? I'm assuming you're a bath only person now. I, I, well, no, I am still a shower girl, but <laughs> I, I am constantly like, like just grabbing onto things. So yeah. do you just so that I'm like, yep, I'm in, I'm good. And I'm just standing there and I'm like, okay, let's just lather up. Let's do something. <laughs> it's very minimal moving in that shower now. <laughs> Double wrap covering the walls. Oh God, time. yeah. If I can, you know, I would, I'll put a seat in there and just sit in yeah. there. <laughs> Why not? Shower in luxury. Why not? Exactly. I mean, obviously you were in the ho the hotel rooms at, by the studios, like, yeah. I'd love to kind of just em envision what it was actually like. Is the shower quite small in BBC studios and office? Like, what's going on? It's actually not. So, like, uh, it's it's one of those kind of walk-in showers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, it, it was just the way... Obviously, like, you wake up in the morning, it's just... You you're tired from the day before. Yeah. It was... Yeah, I was just tired and I just wasn't really like focusing on where I was stepping and it just it just happened. And then the next day, I guess you went to the producers and was like, Bitch, this yeah. happened. It was like, I was just like, I need to talk to someone because <laughs> oh this needs to go. God. Yeah, if, I mean, again, like if you look at the episode, you, you I kind of tried to mask it, but it gets to a point where I'm like, I can't anymore i have to look after myself you tried to mask it during the start of episode two uh or was it yeah. episode one that it happened as well no so it happened the morning of episode two when we were yeah and it just yeah when that happened like yeah it, it you can't you, you kind of see it a little bit like in my face yeah like, people that know me they'll see it in my face that i'm just there yeah like getting redder and redder because it, I could just like, I, it was just a pain. 
But I mean, the queens, when you told the queens, you know, they gave you a proper moment and they were chatting. Yeah. Saki, Saki. So that must have felt nice and I hope, yeah. right? Yeah. It, it, it's a really, that was a really sweet and like heartwarming moment for me. And like behind the scenes, they I had a little nickname called, Aunt, they all called me Auntie Saki. So that's why oh, that okay. kind of like the little dance move kind of came in and then like, yeah. So it was really, it was really sweet to actually get to say goodbye. Yeah. Girl in uh, Drag Race history to do that. So yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. I mean, Saki, from what we did see of you, I and we as an audience completely fell in love. Everything from your hilarious workroom entrance line to your iconic burlesque talent show number, which has had us all in stitches. <laughs> in episode two, we didn't get to see your final look. How do you think you would have fared compared to the other queens? Um, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I don't, I think I would have been safe. Yeah. Um, it, it wouldn't have been a bad outfit but it also wouldn't have compared to House's End. So, because <laughs> they're seen, yeah. so like I- I they killed yeah. it. Yeah, like, I mean, I would just, I would have been safe. How far did you get with the outfit, actually? Um, so I actually, <laughs> I got to- Happy sketches. Like, no, so I actually made the base of the dress and then, when I was like, oh, I actually can't like stand to yeah. like do any proper sewing. I kind of changed it slightly to make it easier because I had to just sit there and hand sew everything. Oh, you, okay, okay. So you just- Yeah, so it just got more difficult to do things as the day went on, as, as the, even the challenge went on. So I was like, okay, let's just change it so it's a little bit easier for my leg and I can just hand stitch everything, which actually just made it harder in the end. But um, it was nearly finished. I just forgot it in the workroom and I forgot to take you it left home. You there. Yeah, as I was packing, I, as I, I was in the car ride home and I went, oh, that's still on the bench. <laughs> like, it's on the bench, but no, oh well. One of the other no queens they probably saw it themselves. Pardon? One of the other queens probably took it for themselves. Uh, I, I'm sure Rue took it and she's gonna wear it at I'm some point. I'm pretty sure Rue's wearing it in episode three, actually. I bet you she is. <laughs> oh, I'll take that. <laughs> I mean, obviously in the challenge, we saw Lil take the win, Kiki and Octavia in the bottom two. Do you agree with those placements? Um, yes. Oh, well, I think the win should have just been spread out to the three of them because oh. as much as like, yeah, um, Chanel made majority of it and whatever. It was all spread out evenly. Like they, you know, it, like uh, Lil said, it was, they spread it out to who could do the thing the quickest and whatever. But even the bottom two, yeah, no, I, yeah, I kind of agree on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think- Barrister, so. <laughs> Barrister was hilarious. <laughs> and I love that Octavia was like, yeah, well, I like this wig. And I love the conf Kiki's confidence. Why? Why does she like it? <laughs> I need a slice of Kiki's confidence because mama, that was a look. It was, uh, yeah. It looked like she had just put the hot glue gun all <laughs> over her and then just rolled in everything that was given to her and just went, yeah, this looks good. And then she put the fruit bowl on her head and went, <laughs> If you had a piece of every different team's outfit, like, I'll take that. Thank you. I wanted... <laughs> she would just bring all the houses together. <laughs> yeah, it's like an iconic, like final outfit. Okay. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> I see the vision. I see the vision, Kiki. I know you. You see, see it. <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, we also saw a bit of tension brewing after Chanel, I guess, outspokenly said that she made Lil's outfit. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that Chanel should have been then given more credit? Do you think she should have even said that on the runway? Um, look, I I understand where she's coming from. I think it it it's the delivery of how she said it. But oh, again, it's you're in when you're in there. It's just like a pressure cooker. So sometimes you say things before you even think about it, and it just comes out, and you're like. Oh, crap, like that's just gonna come across not how I want it to come across. But I, I get where she's coming from and you know 
I hope the girls talk it out. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> let's see what happens That's now. Been real silent ever since. Pardon? Group chat has been real silent ever since. <laughs> I wish it was silent. <laughs> <laughs> what is that like, actually? Tell me. The group chat. Oh. Is it like a WhatsApp group chat with all you and the girls? Are you like sending live like tweets, your favorite reaction? Oh yeah, like obviously like we do have our little group chat, but um, there's no negativity in it. We're all so supportive of each other. Oh, and, so good yeah, and like we all know that what we signed up for. So it's like, it's fine. It, it, we said what we said, pop it in the past and you know, let's just all be supportive towards each other. Yeah. Going forward. And on Chanel speaking on stage about having made Lil's outfit and what you just said actually reminded me of something Miss Fierce Celestia said a few months back. And she said that when you're on Drag Race, it's just so different because obviously when we're watching the show, there's like all the sound effects and the music and the emotion. But when yeah. you're in the room and you're just having a chat, you're on stage talking to the judges and it's just silent. Yeah. Not as drama as it seems when you watch it back. So I feel like Chanel probably just said that on the stage and was like, yeah, like oh, I, I made yeah. I made Lil's as well. Like I I, made, I did most of the work in this team. But then when the producer and the editors put all this like dramatic dun, 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 over the top of it, it kind of just makes it like a bit of like, a, oh, okay. And like, yes, like, Dylan, we yeah. got it. <laughs> I mean, she's not probably at home. Like, I don't think I said it like that, but sure. Um, yeah, I, I think I don't, I, I, I get what she, I, I mean, if she really did all that work, I. I would want credit too. I would want credit, yeah, exactly. I would want credit yeah. too. You know, maybe, yeah, you're right. The delivery, maybe, maybe the time and place. But I mean, yeah. I would want the whole world to know that, you know, I, I did most of the work here. Yeah, exactly. But I guess, yeah, like I said, it, I, it, it was the timing and the delivery of it. But yeah. she will learn. <laughs> she will yeah. learn. It's fine. What challenges in the show are you sad to be missing out on the most? Um, I'm sad that I get to miss out on girl group. Oh. who doesn't want to do a verse <laughs> and you know uh but also risical because that's what i trained in and that's what i like i did for a living before all of this so yeah it's sad that i don't get to do that but i'm sure the girls are gonna smash it from what i've heard from them but yeah what about snatch game what was your character what were your, what were your options I, I, so I bought through, yeah, I bought three options. Oh, so, so you prepared, okay. Oh, yeah, I was prepared. The producers were like, bring three. And then even when I turned up to the oh, workroom, went, how many do you all bring? And they went, one. I went, well, <laughs> three. <laughs> so I, my, my first choice was Imelda Marcos. Okay, nice. And the second was um, Sharon Shuslecki from Kath and Kim. Yeah. And then the third was Jane McDonald. <laughs> Can we get a bit of Jane McDonald? I knew you were going to ask me this. Uh, please don't. <laughs> can, I, can, you, can I ask you a question and you reply in Jane McDonald? Pardon? Can I ask you a question and you reply in Jane McDonald? Oh my God. Please do not judge this accent. But I was going to play her as like she was stuck in Australia for the longest time because of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> stuck on down under season one. Yeah, she's going to be a guest judge down there. Oh, this is going to be horrible. <laughs> okay, I'm RuPaul. Oh, God. Jane, what's the weather like down there? <laughs> See, I suck at Snatch Game. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one, this was the one challenge I was so nervous about. And now I'm in an interview and I have to do a Snatch Game. <laughs> hey, I, 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 I stop. I stop. Okay, we'll move on, we'll move on. <laughs> oh, my God. My RuPaul impression wasn't that good either. So. Is it bad enough I've hurt my knee? <laughs> hey, I mean, who knows? You might be coming back for a future episode. Future season. Yeah, so let's just save it for that. Let's save, save it for that. that. Yeah, yeah, let's save all the impressions for that. We know they're casting for season seven already. I mean, if, if the BBC like, hope, like rang you up tomorrow, would you say yes? I hope so. Well, you know, we just have to wait and see for that one. <gasps> Oh, I like this. I like this. Okay. Nice. We have to wait and see. We have to wait and see. <laughs> There's been a case of some queens. I know like Victoria Scone, obviously. Um, she hurt her knee, I think. And yeah. And she went on to Canada versus the world. And then like there's some US queens where um, they've had to leave for whatever reason. And they've not even gone back since. I mean, the, the, the lines are so blurred now between what drag queens are expected or 
should do or could do like the opportunity is always everywhere so i'm very excited to see what happens well all you gotta do is cross our fingers <laughs> are you going to dragcon uk pardon are you going to dragcon uk absolutely am i'll be there come see me at my booth <laughs> yes i'll come over <laughs> i cannot finish this interview without mentioning rue's line at the end when he said when she said be careful in the shower did you know she said that i didn't find out until later on that she said that really? so i was like oh. I, all the girls had told me and i went oh okay <laughs> cute i'm not even cold yet and <laughs> she's making <laughs> jokes <laughs> so but it's fine like i like I, it's it, things happen and it's fine i'm i don't i'm not too serious about the situation because it's life so yeah yeah the good thing about it is we know it's drag race and it's it is really annoying and upsetting of course yeah. but we know that there's a lot of opportunity and you showed such a good example whilst you were on the show you know i have no doubts that the bbc will be calling you up so or maybe canada or maybe oh. at the us maybe never who knows who knows never know never know <laughs> That's to get me out of here <laughs> oh my god we'll see let's let's give it a go why not <laughs> Okay, thank you. For our last 60 seconds of the interview, we're going to be playing a little game. It's something we do with all of our pop-up guests. Yeah. It's a little game called Word Association. Okay. The rules are super simple. I say a word, and you say the first word that pops into your head. I'm going to okay. start a clock, and we're going to see how many answers you get, how many uh, words you throw out at me. And then we're going to compare your score to your other queens and whoever wins gets a prize. The last winner of this was Hannah Condor. Oh, okay. Cute. He was fitting them out like Nicki Minaj. It was, it was hot up in there. Bars. <laughs> so, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Makeup. Brushes. Designer. Clothes. RuPaul. Queen. Busted. Queen. <laughs> Appendix. Out. Stimulation. Nice. <laughs> Underwear. Briefs. Theft. Mine. Surgery. Plastic. Michelle. The doll. <laughs> Delivery. Not this. Beard. Queen. Horror. Movie. Anachronism. What's that? <laughs> Bum fuzzle. Fuzz? And we are out of time. Wow. <laughs> you, you had a good strategy there. No one has done that before. You were giving me one syllable words. Yeah, that's very me. Like, if that, yeah. Zach, you, I'm happy to announce that you scored a total of 15 points! Yay! You could win something. Fingers crossed. At least I'll win something, please. <laughs> Thank you so much for speaking with me. Please tell the world what you have coming up in your life and where they can find you. So, I'll be at DragCon in. January, um, come see me there at my booth and everywhere else. Just keep an eye on my socials. I'm everywhere at the moment and I can't keep up with it sometimes. <laughs> and I'm a celebrity, get me out of here coming very soon. Oh my God, yes. Get me on there. <laughs> and then <out. laughs> and Thank you guys for watching. Remember to subscribe for weekly pop-up episodes with the Queens and I shall see you next week. Bye. <laughs>